Well, I think traditionally war has been men's domain. So men have made decisions to go to war, men have carried the guns, and traditionally men have also been the primary um, casualties in war. Um, it, that's, that's very much changed in, in modern times. So today we see that of the over 40 million refugees, uh, half of them are women. Um, and it's the population of, of Australia. I mean, the women are now, and civilians are much more targeted in war zones. And you'll see in the conflicts today, women and civilians being targeted specifically in Democratic Republic of Congo, for example, where whole villages have, have, have been raped. Uh, and it's not just during the conflicts themselves, it's also in the decision to flee. Uh, the women can face quite specific uh, protection concerns from trafficking and, and so on. But just general uh, difficulties in fleeing. The, the journeys can be arduous. I worked uh, in Sudan with people fleeing, uh, pregnant women walking for days in the desert without access to health care, and, and it's no secret that many women just don't survive those journeys. And then to the place of, of where, where they're seeking refuge, a whole set of new responsibilities, um, new threats arise. So they're looking after family members very often with new responsibilities, very few. Um, means as well. Things like fistulas um, I observed in Sudan can be very debilitating. Women can't leave their homes um, for lack of health care or just basic things like uh, sanitary items that are not available so leave women confined to the homes. But given their experience of war, women can also um, speak very much about the conditions for peace. They, they, they know very well what the conditions for peace should be. Yet we see now women are very often left out of peace processes, with, with few exceptions and, and clear exceptions like the Liberian women who won the Nobel Prize. Um, they're a good example uh, for how women can and should be included in peace processes now. Um, I think having worked with literally thousands of women and girls in camps, and I'd have to say that their strength and resilience um, can only be an inspiration.